right, let's look at this example problem. Actually, this is one I put on an exam the other day, and some of the students had problems with it, so it might be helpful to go over this one. What we've got here is we've got an assembly. It's got three titanium rods and a rigid bar AC. All right, so you can see it's all suspended here. Cross-sectional area of each rod is going to be given in the figure, so we can see the areas. And then there's a vertical force. Of course, there's a typo here in the picture. It's 20. Up here it says 2, so you know students were quick to point that out to me. So let's put a 20 there, and that's going to be applied to that ring F. And then what we want to do is find the vertical displacement of point F. Now, I gave you the E value for the titanium right here. It's 350 gigapascal. So I want to know the vertical displacement of F. Now, when you look at this problem, the first thing you need to notice is that point E, where we have this rod attached here, is not in the center of AC. Right? It's over. It's over to the left. All right, so left of center, we're only 0.5 meters here on this side, where we have 0.75 meters on this side. So that's going to kind of change things. That means it's not symmetric, so you can't just assume we have uh, the same displacement on each side. So that's going to make it a little bit more challenging. All right, now remember we're going to be using our displacement equation here. So let's just write the generic equation down. So we're going to have PL over AE. So that'll be our equation that we're going to use. And P is going to be your internal force. So obviously I need to go through, I need to find the internal forces in these members. So let's do that first. So that'll be our step one. And let's do a free body diagram. So for this one, I'm just going to draw this rigid bar here. This is AC and the force in rod AB, let's just call it AB, and then over here, let's call this one CD. And then this rod that's hanging off the bottom here, EF, if I were to section this and do the free body diagram, I would get that that internal force there is 20, all right, because that's the only force really acting there. So let's just say that this is 20 here. Okay, so now I have that, and this distance is 1.25 meters. All right, so now I've got that, and let's put this distance. So that's 0.5, this is 0.75. Now let's look at our equilibrium equations. So I have two unknowns, we need two equations. So let's do the moment equation first. I'm going to take the moment about point A counterclockwise will be positive. A is over here. So that means I'm going to have a positive CD and that distance will be 1.25 and then down here at the bottom the 20 kilonewton force that also provides a moment right so that's going to be negative though because that would be clockwise. So we have negative and then the distance here because we're going to A would be 0.5. And we set that equal to zero. So now if you solve, you get that CD is eight kilonewtons. All right, so that's that loading inside of that rod there on the right. Next, let's do the Y direction. I'm gonna say up is positive. So we have AB, now we got CD, and then minus 20. Set it equal to zero. I already know what CD is, right? So I can plug that in as 8. And then I can go ahead and solve for AB. All right, so we have 8 minus 20. That gives us negative 12. You take it over to the other side, you get positive 12. So now I've got all of the forces that I need to find my displacements. Okay, so now let's go ahead. And let's figure out how much displacement I have in these two rods at the top, all right? Because obviously if I'm pulling this rigid bar AC down, it's going to displace both of those. All right, so let's do that step first. So our delta A will be the displacement of this point right here. That's gonna be that internal force, so AB. 
Now notice this is kilonewtons. I always switch everything over to newtons. That's just what I like to do. So I'm going to have 12 times 10 to the third newtons. And then I need L, right, from right here. L is the length of that rod, so it's going to be 2 meters. And then I need A, so that's my cross-sectional area. So we're given that as 60 millimeters squared. So let's put that. Now, again, I always like to convert everything to newtons and then meters. All right, so let's switch this over to meters squared. So one meter squared is equivalent to 1,000 squared millimeter squared. All right, so basically you're going to divide 60 by 1,000 squared. That'll get it in meters squared. And then finally we have E. So that was 350. That's gigapascal, though. Let's just get that in pascal. So we want to multiply by 10 to the ninth. All right, so now we've got that. Now you just have to go through and kind of work through the math here. You're going to end up with 24,000 up on top. And then we're going to have 2.1 times 10 to the seventh here on the bottom. All right. And then finally, if you do the math, you're going to get 0 0.0014. Actually, I'm missing a one here. Let's write it over. 0 0.001143 meters. And if you want, I forgot to write these units up here. You could put newton meters. And then remember, we have Pascal. That's one newton per square meter. So if we have that, the square meter cancels with this one. So we're left with newtons in the denominator. So now the newtons cancel, we're left with meters, all right? Now that's the displacement for just A, right? This left side of this rigid bar AC. Now let's go ahead and do C. So same steps, right? But now we have different uh, values here. I have a different force. It's eight kilonewtons. So let's do eight times 10 to the three. That's newtons. The length there is still two meters. Now we're going to have a different area. Our area now is 45. All right, so we have the 45, and then again, we're going to divide by the square of 1,000. And then we need G, so that's going to stay the same, 350 times 10 to the ninth. And again, that's Pascal. So now we simplify. And once you do that, you're going to get 0 0.001016 meters. And it's important on these problems that you carry out several uh, digits past the decimal place. All right. Because these numbers are small to begin with. So if you're only taking, you know, the first two digits after the decimal place, you're going to lose a lot of accuracy. So it's always a good idea to keep several values there. Okay, so now we've got this part here. Now, what do we want to do? Well, what we're going to do next, let's look at just this rod here. Right, this part here. Now, I'm going to forget about point E moving at this point in time. All right, I'm going to forget right now that E is going to move. I'm just looking at the displacement in the rod itself. Okay, so I'm going to say, that that's the displacement of F relative to E. Because that neglects any movement of point E itself. All right, so we're only looking at the change in the rod itself. All right, now for that one, we had a force of 20. And that was kilonewtons. So we're going to have 20 times 10 to the 3 newtons. And then the length is the 1.5 meters. And then we're going to put it over the area, which is 75. Again, that's millimeters squared. So you can divide by 1,000 squared. And then we have the 350 again. And that one's in Pascal. So now we can go ahead and 
find this. And here you get 0 0.001143 meters. All right, so it just so happens that these two are the same with the number of digits I carried out at least. Okay, so now I've got this. Now I want the vertical displacement of F, which is right here. Okay, now obviously if this is a rigid bar, AC, if A and C are moving down, well, E is going to move down also, right? So there's no way E can stay up in its original position. So this whole thing is going to shift down. But the thing is, is this vertical bar here, this EF, it's off center, right? It's left of center. So that means instead of moving, you know, straight down like this, it's going to kind of move it at a tilted angle, all right? So it's going to be at an angle. So I need to figure out what that is. Okay, and that's going to be our next step. So first, let's draw out a little picture here. All right, so let's just draw this rectangle here. This is going to be A, this is going to be C, and then let's say this is point E here. Now, this distance is 0.5. This is 0.75. And we're going to be moving down. All right, so this was my original A. Now I'm going to end up down here at A prime. So let's connect those. And then we're going to, let's see if I can do this without messing it up, connect these. All right, and this would be C prime. So the prime locations are the new locations. And that means for E, we're going to jump down to right here. Okay, so now we've got that, and now let's label our displacements here. So going from C to C prime, well that's going to be the delta C that we already found, right? So that's the point zero zero one zero one six meters. Okay, and that's why I drew this, you know, line right here across the center because that whole distance there is going to be that delta C. So we're going to have that. And then what we want to do is let's look over at this side. All right. Well, I have A to A prime. Well, that whole displacement then is going to be this point zero zero one one four three. All right. So let's put it over here. So this whole displacement here is a point zero zero one one four three meters, right? Well, I already know what this is. This was C. Let's just put delta C because I'm running out of room. Now that means that this piece here, what's that length going to be? Well, it's going to be this one minus the delta C, right? So that means here we're going to have 0 0.000127, and that's meters. Now, you'll see why that's important in just a second. And then lastly, let's look right here. I already know what this distance here is, still delta C. All right, so that 0 0.001016. Now, what about this amount here? Well, I don't know what that is, all right, because I don't know what this angle is, all right? So let's call this delta E prime, okay? And we're going to use similar triangles to find delta E prime. Let's do that next. All right, so first of all, Let's look at the big triangle here at the bottom. So going all the way from C prime over to A prime, we're going from this whole length here. So my length is going to be 1.25 because that's the 0.75 plus the 0.5. And the displacement that I get when I go this full length is going to be the 0 0.000127. Let's meters. All right. Now, using similar triangles, I'm going to do the same thing because that you know ratio has to be the same. I'm going to go from C over to where E goes down. 
All right, so we're going to go from here to E prime. So that means we're going to have 0.75. And I need the vertical displacement here for delta E prime. I don't know what that is, though, so let's just call that delta E prime. Well, now I can solve for delta E prime. And we get 0 0.000076 meters. Okay, so that's just this bottom portion. So to get my full displacement for point E, I need to add delta C to that. So we'll say delta E is going to equal basically delta C plus delta E prime, which gives me 0 0.001016 plus 0 0.000076, and then that equals 0 0.001092 meters. Okay, so that is the displacement of E. So that's basically how much this point E is going to move down. Now I want to know the displacement of F. Alright, so the displacement of F then is going to be E, or the displacement of E, plus the displacement in rod EF, right? Because if point E moves down, we have that displacement, plus we've got the rod that has displacement itself. So we have to add those two together. All right, so we have delta E plus delta F relative to E. And then we just add them up, All right? So we're going to have the point zero zero one zero nine two that's meters, plus the point zero zero one one four three that's meters. So then in the end we end up getting 0 0.002235 meters and if you want to put that in millimeters you can that would be 2.235 meters. All right, so either one of those would work. But that tells you your displacement of point F. Okay, so like I said, the important thing to notice was this was not symmetric, right? If both had had, you know, 0.75 meters on, you know, each side of rod EF, the whole thing would have been symmetric, would have been a little bit shorter. But we didn't have that, so you had to do the similar triangles here. All right, see you guys next time.